In this moment, I would like to invite Janet Barrett to read Gospel of John, chapter 14, from verses 1 to 6, please. reading is taken from the New International Version, chapter of John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here it is the reason, reading of God's holy word. Thank you. In the same spirit, we are going to sing Immortal, Invisible, God on the Wise.
message. This moment I would like to invite Janet Barrett, the moment of the family tribute, please. Sorry, you have to hear me again so soon. Um, this tribute is on behalf of myself and my mother, who's not able to be here, Florence Barrett. Um, Aunt Millie was known to, well, we knew her as Aunt Millie or Aunt Mildred, or in some cases I used to call her Miss Mildred. What I remember about my aunt in particular was her generosity. She was a very, very generous person. Um, we often used to have our little run-ins run um, with coming to Birmingham from London. I used to call her like a week in advance and say, oh, some of us are coming up to see you. What would follow would be a trip to the Bull Ring, a trip to Soho Road, and lots of buying and spending. And when we would arrive, in the early morning, we'd arrive to a massive spread of a breakfast, not known to ordinary man. So her and I used to have our little fights, whereby I'd say to her, give me the eggs and give me the frying pan. And she said, no, you're not getting it in here. I said, yes, I am. And we used to have our little run-ins because when we were ready to go home, I had to make sure I came to Birmingham with the boot of my car empty. Because I had to ask her, does she think that there's no food in London? She used to fill the car with everything, bread, patty, then my uncle would have his allotment, so we'd go back down with a whole lot to share. But also what I do remember of my aunt was the fact that um, she definitely was a, an unsung community person. On multiple occasions when I would speak to her, she said, along with my uncle, we have just gone to visit this person in hospital, or we've gone to help this relative, or we just came back from seeing this person, and all those kind of things. Um, it's not that everybody gets acclaimed for doing well, but my aunt is a person that was a life well lived, and a life that knew how to include people and serve people. The way she showed her love was to always remember birthdays, there would always be a card coming. Birthdays, Christmas, any kind of occasion, the cards would come. And I saw her disappointment when she got to a stage in life where she could no longer go out and get the cards. She would apologise when we called her. Um, she said, I'm sorry I've not been able to get a card. And as I used to say to her, Auntie, it doesn't worry because it doesn't matter because you spend all of your life sending cards and showing us your love by your generosity, feeding us and whatever. So I just want to remember the fact that my interaction with my Auntie <coughs> was the fact that she gave her heart in the way that she gave to people. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like you to invite uh, Adela, please. Whenever we visit her, the first thing that she would say is, 
Who's ready for a cuppa? And out comes her best china. Growing up, Auntie Minnie was always there. She was either a phone call away or a short drive down the motorway. We were always greeted with a beaming smile. Even when you talk to her on the phone, her laughter would lift you. She always had a smile on her face. Her smile was an authentic one which shone through her eyes, right through to her cheekbones, displaying joy and sheer welcome. Aunt Minnie was always prepared. You couldn't just have a quick visit with her, even if you thought you could. She was willing and able to prepare a meal for you, and often she did. Such was Aunt Minnie's hospitality. She took great delight in preparing a feast for her guests. We never left her home hungry or wanting in any way. It was in moments like these, and in equal measure, she would take time to find out how the world was with you. There was no, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine exchanges. She was patient and skilled in getting you to open up and share more information. Our aunt was an engaged listener, non-judgmental, and showed both love and compassion. She would tend to impart words of wisdom when the time was right. <coughs> our aunt was also our aunt also had an unshakable faith and walk with God. And this was demonstrated in who she was, how she lived, and her daily encounters with others. Auntie Minnie truly walked the walk of a believer and follower of Christ in both character and deed. Whether you were family, friend, acquaintance or a stranger, if you were thirsty, she would give you water to drink. If you were hungry, she would give you food to eat. And if you were cold, she would give you clothes and provide shelter to keep you warm. To me, Aunt Minnie was a good and faithful servant in the commission of so many others. Sorry. I am humbled by the examples that she has set. I'm proud that she was our aunt. I'm prouder still that she's left us all with such sweet memories. But above all, the legacy for us to continue. Thank you. Thank you. This moment, the scripture readings, I would like to invite Will Ford to read Ecclesiastical chapter 3 from verse 1 from 2 4, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes. Um, in circumstances such as this, it is very difficult to find something appropriate to say. But in the case of Cousin Billy, who was a truly wonderful person, who used to entertain everybody who goes to visit her family in Birmingham, she will be truly missed. And I have actually going to read for you something from Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 to 4. It says, to everything there is a, there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, and a time to plant, and a time to pluck out that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to love, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the same spirit, we are going to sing prize to the holiest in the height.
this moment of three boots is open to morning. Good afternoon, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Keith's partner, Bettina. Firstly, I would like to read a tribute sent from my mum, Judith. Mildred and Neville, two wonderful people I met 20 years ago. Always very caring and loving to each other and their family and friends. When we couldn't meet up, we'd have lovely catch-ups on the phone. Neville and I sharing shopping tips in his allotment stories, Mildred chatting about her love of flowers and plants and her garden. I have one of her favourite plants, which Bettina and Keith bought for me to care for. It takes pride of place in my lounge. I see it every day and think of her. A very devout lady, always saying God blessed me when we spoke. I'm so sad that they have both left us, leaving a big gap in our lives, but are at least still together as they would have wanted. So I say to them once more, with love, affection and happy memories, God bless. This is now my tribute. Over 20 years ago, I was formally introduced to Mildred and Neville as Keith's girlfriend during the Luton family function. I subsequently spent many, many Sundays and Christmases at the Barrett's house. And although not married to Keith, I was always introduced as their daughter-in-law. Mildred and I bonded over our love for shopping and finding a bargain, and also our frustrations about Keith's lateness and his staying up late. Mildred was always so kind, generous, and put others first. She would never let you leave the house empty-handed. Her dedication to God and the church was clearly evident, and that dedication carried through to the people she cared for. She had a stubborn side, and she wasn't one to mess with. The stories I heard, such as the time she was given some substandard oranges at the Bullring Market, and proceeded to throw them at the market trader. <laughs> you can just picture the scene. In recent years, when Neville became ill, Mildred put an incredible amount of trust in me to help and advise her about her various affairs. That trust will always mean so much to me. Mildred meant so much to so many people. Her whole life was dedicated to caring for others. That legacy, that dedication will be her legacy. And I'm proud to have been her daughter-in-law. Thank you. I would like to invite our, in this moment, Elogy, uh, Kate Barrett, please. Still the principles that shaped her life. 
she went to Springfield All Age School, and when she wasn't in school, she would be looking after animals at the family home. In the backyard there would be pigs, chickens, and in particular goats. One grew so fond, so one grew so fond of the little baby goats she regarded them as pets. Mum set sail for these shores, leaving everything she knew in 1960, some three years after Dad arrived. Rumour has it that Dad saw Mum's picture one day and knew instantly he wanted her in his life. So they started communicating by letter. The back and forth never ended. They were married on the 4th of July 1964 at St. Germain's Church in Birmingham, a city that will remain their home for the rest of their days. My mother wanted to become a nurse and studied hard to make that dream a reality. Her nursing career took her to some of the best known hospitals of the time, Dudley Road, where I was born in Texas, um, Summerfield, Women's Hospital, Good Hope and High Court. What made Mum special was her generosity, her kindness to others in need, and her fierce loyalty to family and friends. When she smiled from ear to ear, she lit up the room. Mum was always one for being out and about. She said to me on many occasions, she would go by the wrongs. Her main priorities were shopping for bargains and gardening. Very rarely did she come away empty handed because as a youngster I was relied upon to be a pair of extra hands. I swear both my arms are a couple of inches longer now due to those trips. One of the shopping sprees were a stuff of legend and My mother was an avid gardener and she would always be on the lookout for flowers, shrubs, plants, etc. in name. She took immense pride in the garden and if passers by at the front of the house stopped to admire her handiwork, she would chat to them, nothing pleasing. Them. She liked to read, whether it was a Bible verse, magazines, or a good autobiography. Mum was also a keen seamstress who did crafting before it became a thing. She had all the gear and the ideas. One of those ideas I remember was to make me a pair of Oxford back trousers or road swimmers for those old enough to know. It was the 70s, the time when staff had so Mum, I forgive you. I also remember with fondness the happiest times I spent with my mother, travelling across the country on seaside emptiness by coach. Every trip was an event. The preparation of the sandwiches the night before, the early morning departures from the coach station, and the armful of goodies she usually brought back for friends and family. I'll always treasure those times we shared. Speaking of friends and family, if either came to the house, whether by chance or design, the deal was nobody was allowed to leave unless they were offered something to eat or drink. Mum's mantra was, nobody leaves his house hungry. That was typical. Mum loved her music, and when she was much younger, she sang as a soloist in the church back home in Springfield. In later years, if she was cooking or doing some other task, she would be singing usually a hymn, gospel music, music, or sacred or secret music. Well, her favourites, with Charlie Pryde's groundbreaking country music coming in distant seconds. On a Sunday afternoon in our house, Mum would say to me, that he, me or Dad, 
put on the jewels or put on songs of praise. It was meant as an order, not a request. Almost particularly close to my aunt Florence Barrett, there were sisters in name, sisters in law in name only. I'm so glad her daughter Janet could be here today to represent her. Faith and family were the bedrock of mom's life. She was brought up spiritually in the Moravian church and was immensely proud of that heritage. The giving and doing for others was a tenet of her belief. Alongside my late father, she also was a valued member of this church. I know they loved coming here every Sunday to be among friends who would later become like family. Some of her friends are here, and I'd like to thank the church community for their kindness and generosity of spirit towards my parents. It will never be forgotten. Their commitment to faith was unquestionable, and the desire to serve God led them to the service of others. This was their testament and their legacy. Mom, proud of the legacy both you and Dad left behind as an example for me to try for. This leads me to the latter part of Mum's life, where her health had slowly begun to deteriorate and with it the independent the independence she valued so much. That loss of independence for such a vibrant outgoing and strong-willed affected her deeply. It was something she never truly got over. Mum, however, was a fighter. She knew her time here on earth was drawing to a close, but was determined not to leave until she was called home. She had always believed in me through the trials and tribulations that some life sometimes brings. Mum, I will try not to make my life small. I know that my mother is no longer suffering and is at eternal peace. The play, the pain which afflicted her for so long is no more. The two towers towering pillars of my life, my mum, my dad, I know more. I said this to my late father a year to the day before he passed, and I will repeat it again to my mum. This is not a goodbye, but adieu until we all meet again. Mom, your love for me will be seared into my heart until the end of time. I love you. Always have, always will. Lay your weary head to rest and sleep. Sleep well. same spirit we are going to invite the Lord hand to, to read Revelation chapter 21 from verse 1 to 7, please. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. 
He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, crying or pain. The old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my God. Thank you. In the same spirit, we are going to sing, Great is thy faithfulness. Excuse me, Minister. Um, yes. I would like to say a few words for the call of the virus family. Of course, can everybody hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. We were nurses at the Dublin Road Hospital. And of course, when we were on duty, we had a very wonderful time. At lunch time or when we had breaks, we would be able to talk about the God, you know, because she was such a wonderful person. And she did her work very well. She's not leaving until everything is big and bad. And so I just want to say, to her son and daughter-in-law, what that was to be, that you will lose a very happy, wonderful person. May God bless you, and every day I know that you will remember her. And I would love everybody to say, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. No more pain, no more heartaches, but the former things are out the way. So shall we sing at this time? Am I privileged? And yes. Everybody, and we can clap our hands, because although it is sad, yet it is joyful, because she is gone home. Soon and very soon, we are going. Faithfulness, please.
message? Kate, I received uh, one letter about your mother. I have here a wonderful pastoral care team. And the one sister responsible for your mother, Mary Barker, he sat there. He helped me about your mother and she wrote, Mildred and her husband were regular at Sunday morning service and after service, Mildred would go to the parlor here where she could sit and speak to people as they come in. I have here some, I will highlight, uh, highlight some sentence I will give after service for you. And I would like to highlight one sentence, wonderful. She was a good friend and I always left feeling blessed. She was a lovely lady for all she met. I will give you after service. But when I was here, I had a question. Why are we here? For this question, I have two answers. The first reason is that thank God for the life of Mildred Barrett. We are here to thank God for the opportunity to have been by Mildred's side throughout her life, but also for having been by our side. We are here to thank God for the opportunity for Mildred to have been part of our lives, but also for the opportunity to be part of her life. We are here to thank God for the good laws uh, he had alongside Mildred Barrett, but also when we cried it alongside her. Having a grateful heart to God is the first reason we are here to say, thank you God for the life of Mildred Barrett. Second answer for this question is, the second reason is to say, see you soon to Mildred Barrett. Unfortunately, some didn't have the opportunity to say goodbye to Mildred Barrett. And that is why they are here now. But others won't have that opportunity because they are far away right now. And so, the grief becomes ever, even more painful. I'm going to tell you about an event that happened on Monday night, May 2nd, in the hospital room where Mildred was. She received a very special visitor. Jesus appeared in her room and they had a very private conversation. Jesus said, Mildred, I have been with you from the day you were born. I was by your side throughout your childhood. I watched you grow up and I was with you at your wedding. At Kate's birth, I was in his room next to you. Mildred, for 89 years, I've been living with you. So, what do you think now of you coming to live with me? Mildred answered, answered promptly, Yes, Jesus, I want to live with you. Beloved, since May 2nd, Mildred has moved away. Hi. And she is living with Christ and his son. We, I will also be at Mildred's side. Christians, in moments like this, do not say a simple, simple goodbye. But 
See you soon. Because soon we will be together again. But this time it will be forever. Amen. Amen. And this is exactly what is written in the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16. For God loved Mildred Barrett, you and I, the world, so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, so that, pay attention, finality, everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. The first reason is to thank God for having met Mildred Barrett. The second reason is to say, see you soon to Mildred Barrett. But this is not the end, but the beginning of the new journey for her, however eternal. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory and thanks be given to you, Almighty God, our Father. Because in your great love for the world, you gave your Son to be our Savior. He lived our life, bore our grief, and died your death upon the cross. We thank you that you have brought him back from death with power and great glory. That he has conquered sin and death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We praise you for the great company of that faithful whom Christ has brought you through that to behold your face in glory, who join with us in worship, prayer, and service. For you full, perfect, and sufficient gift of life in Christ, all praise and thanks be given to you forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, in your wisdom and grace, you have given us us join through the lives of your departed servants. We thank you, Mildred, and for our memories of her. We praise you for your goodness and mercy and followed her all the days of her life and for her faithfulness in the task to which you called her. We thank you that in no mi for Mildred, the tribulation of this world are over and that in past. And we pray that you will bring us with her to the joy of your perfect kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, Deal graciously with those who mourn, especially Kate, Kate, that they may cast every care on you and know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Commendation. This moment, all stand, please. Let us commend new bread to God. In your, into your keeping of merciful God, we commend your servant new bread. Receive her into the army of your mercy, into the joy of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Let us pray. Together. Right, we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
now I'm going to give a blessing, but I will give it in Portuguese before and then in English. A graça do Deus triunfo, o amor do Deus filho e a doce e maravilhosa consolação que esteja sobre cada vida, sobre cada lá, especialmente na vida do Kate Barrett, hoje e eternamente. Amém. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our heart and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Sim, sim. 
Jesus that this world cannot erase. And this is why I like to tell Jamaica.
cameras on the live stream. This camera is coming to an end. The other camera on JSP V8 is still running and that will continue to the cemetery, but this one for the church only on the internet broadband is coming to an end. So uh, please switch over to JSP V8 and then check out the reserve channels too in case we have two cameras at the cemetery. But this one is coming to an end now. Too short for it, are you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, for those on the live stream, then uh, we are now going to hot foot it over to the cemetery for the internment. Um, but I'm going to keep this stream running, so these five cameras will be edited. But for the live stream, I'm keeping it running. So bear with us, and um, this live stream will continue. 
at the cemetery in about five minutes or so. Wait for the cameraman to the set The camera is just, it's fine. Yeah, just waiting for him to set up. Yes, no, it's fine. The camera is fine. Yeah. So this will be this group uh, right here. Yeah, all right. Yes? Okay. Since the earthly life of Mildred has come to an end, we commit her his body, earth to earth, ash to ash, dust to dust, in short, and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life throughout our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, of all, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almight power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to departed rest, to the word peace, and to us and all the faithful life everlasting, then the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.
Stream. Uh, sadly, we have a lady who's collapsed just behind the funeral car. Florence is very particular. Uh, I believe she's okay. Yeah. 